told that uh, you, you're committed to supporting a program that allows uh, tuition assistance for people in religious schools. Yeah, I thought that those schools, that, that uh, the caliber of that study was equal to the education somebody would get in the um, public or independent universities. Um, the question constitutionally is whether or not we could um, have uh, a tap for rabbinical students since it, they are religious institutions. My feeling is that it's still education, it's still part of their education and we can. Um, I put it in the budget and the legislature passed it, but the, the bill that I had to sign included $600 million of discretionary spending that we as a state couldn't afford, so I had to veto the whole bill and consequently veto my plan to uh, provide TAP for rabbinical students. So it's a to hold that. And, and, and I think the bill would have, well, uh, I reintroduced it in the special session recently, but it didn't pass because of a dispute over charter schools. But what we do know is that both houses of the legislature are willing to pass this, and I as governor were willing to sign it. So they'll take it up again next year, and uh, I'll be an advocate for it because I didn't promise uh, a lot of the institutions that I would try to see it through. Have you been in touch with Elliot Spitzer during your tenure, or have you spoken to him lately? Oh, I talk to him from time to time, and he's um, upbeat. He's doing his own television show now, and I think as time goes on, he's getting more comfortable, and I, I think the show is very good. Um, do you think that he's uh, his capability for a political comeback? I think it might have been too soon uh, in, in the next cycle, but I think he is so dynamic so creative and so thoughtful on so many issues uh, that uh, it would be a waste if we didn't use former Governor Spitzer in some form of service uh, over the next few years. And, and I think he's uh, very willing to make himself available. What about you? What are your plans? Uh, my plans hopefully are to uh, go back to teaching, which I had done some years ago, and uh, maybe even a little media work myself. What would you like to teach? Uh, I don't know. I don't know who had, but, uh, but I'm certainly thinking about it. And uh, it's, uh, you know, and I'm also really uh, more than what happens to me. I'm concerned about what happens to the policy issues I, I was most interested in. Uh, uh, medical and scientific research, clean renewable energy sources, um, prevention of domestic violence, uh, arts and culture, which are cut every time there's a budget, they're always cut the most, which we did not do in our administration, and also uh, in diversity in procurement, where New York was rated 46 of the 50 states, and now is it will shortly be in the top five, as we were able to accomplish over the last few years. Would you have that role without a future run for, for political office again? I don't see why uh, people who have been in government continue to recycle themselves. I think you put in a tremendous amount of effort, your family suffer, you receive all kinds of indignities and accusations that are false, which usually come more from uh, enemies rather than uh, real issues. And I think that um, because of that, I, I think I'd be a lot happier. Um, for my public service to be volunteers. You grew up in a political home, you went into politics. What would you tell your children if they decided to discourage uh, or encourage them from going into politics? Well, I still think public service is quite an honorable way to live. It is um, castigated in what is a frenzy because of the actions of few people um, by entities that are rife with as much corruption as uh, public offices. And uh, I, I think that um, the young people who would like to get involved, I think it's um, uh, a, a very decent way to, for, you know, usually less compensation, 
from the people who wind up doing it can receive in other places. And um, I would tell my children, if that's what interests you, please pursue it. I know that when you were in the State Senate, you were very involved in programs uh, promoting black Jewish relations, which really is something we don't hear about anymore. It seems like it's almost uh, unnecessary. Do you feel that the mission really was accomplished? Uh, there's so few causes of attention and strife as opposed to the 80s and the 90s when there was crowd hanks and all these other issues. Do you, do you feel like that's something that's just fallen by the wayside uh, because um, it's been so successful, the relationships have grown? You know, I, I really hadn't thought about that until you asked me, Adam, but I think that's probably the reason where you don't hear about the need for black Jewish dialogue. I think uh, there were some celebrated incidents, the remarks of Reverend Jesse Jackson, the uh, Crown Heights situation, and I think they spurred a lot of dialogue and, and uh, 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 attempts to, to understand. I think um, many African Americans tolerated um, uh, remarks and hate speech, uh, which is particularly um, damaging and frightening to Jewish people who remember that in Kristallnacht and other places that the Germans ran through the streets yelling uh, these horrible things before the attacks came. And so this is why hate speech is, has a particular um, it's particularly notable when it is done to people of the Jewish faith. And I think, as I said, that African Americans would tolerate this because um, uh, there was a lack of understanding of the historical uh, experiences uh, that, uh, that Jewish people had, had uh, gone through. So as I've um, uh, always uh, joked about the example that I use is that uh, at Columbia University, at, uh, at the seminary at Columbia University, Ivan Bosky gave a very generous contribution in 1985. And they put a big plaque on the wall at the Jewish Theological Seminary in Zahn. In 1986, Ivan Bosky got indicted. And um, that plaque came down immediately. But I was suggesting if Ivan Bosky was black, so then his name would be Ivan Broski, that they would probably put neon lights around the, uh, the plaque to show support for him. And what it is, is it's two um, traditionally discriminated and oppressed peoples for centuries um, reacting sometimes differently and then misunderstanding each other's reactions. And I think because of the uh, great efforts on both sides, not just from the clergy, but from public servants, business leaders, and just regular citizens, uh, I think there's tremendous support for um, the uh, needs and the values of both communities. And, and I think that's why you don't see too many of these dialogues, because everybody's in a good place. Mission accomplished? Well, you know, something can always create uh, a little strife but I think there's so many warm and wonderful relationships that it would be addressed very well. Very it is the next year, the 20th anniversary of the Crown Heights situation. Uh, do you think that such a thing could happen again? Or? Well, uh, you never say never. But I think one of the issues that uh, occurred in Crown Heights is that the mayor was. Uh, it, it was not advocated that he go to Crown Heights and meet with the leaders of the community as stringently, and it was his black and Jewish advisors that I think could have um, perhaps uh, given him a, a, you know, a better sense, because he, the mayor, is a, a decent man who marched against Soviet Jewry in the mid-60s when the rest of us didn't even know what, it, what the problems Jews living in the Soviet Union had and had always been a, a tremendous supporter of, of causes. And so I don't think it was a porous response as much as it was a little bit of a delayed response, which um, unfortunately uh, he it, uh, was not cast in the, uh, in, in the manner that I think he really is, which is a person who is offended by attacks on all people. 
last question on a, on a, on a lighter note. Uh, Saturday Night Live did that uh, skit of you. You weren't amused by it. Uh, later on, you surprised a lot of people by going in to show yourself. Was that a case of if you can't beat them, join them? No, that was a case of if you can't beat them, beat them again. Um, the, the fact is that um, I did get a chance to extract an apology for Saturday Night Live, and I don't think there's anyone that has ever been ridiculed on that show that ever got one. They apologized to me on the show for what they've done, and my point was not that you can't make fun of people because of their disability. I think we uh, were all lighthearted and can laugh at ourselves. I certainly uh, make fun of myself all the time, but a depiction solely of a clumsy, uh, ignorant, incompetent person just because uh, they have a visual disability underscores the fact that 71% of, of uh, blind adults who are of working age are unemployed in this society, which I think is still a shame that uh, our educational system produced results educating the blind beyond the national average, but can't seem to employ people. So I think that's a real cry out for workforce development, which will bring in some of the revenues that we need to address this fiscal crisis that we have. Governor Patterson, I can't thank you enough for spending this, your limited time with us in your last weeks in office. I appreciate it very much. It's an honor and a privilege, and thank you very much. Well, Adam, even when I'm out of office, if you think that I have a view about something that would uh, be interesting to the readers and to those who watch on the web, um, I'd be happy to join. Thank you. And on behalf of our readers and viewers, I want to wish you a happy holiday, happy new year, and, and good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you.